Hi everyone, Martin here from martinsmayhem.co.uk. I hope you're all well. Today I'm going to be demonstrating this little 4x4 note card that you see here um, using the Brood for you stamp set and coordinating dies. I like to keep my dies, as you can see, quite messily. Inside, um, I've already missing a few because they're already out ready to use. But it's a super fun stamp set. Something that I was a bit unsure of initially, but I love it towards the end. So let's get started. I'm going to move the card over here. We're going to start by bringing in our sample trimmer, which is my favourite tool in my inventory. Just going to extend the arm out. So I'm going to put it at an angle so you can see. So I'm going to do this card four inches by four inches. For some reason, I always do my square cards in inches and yet my rectangular cards in centimetres. Who knows why? So I'm going to cut at four inches and then cut again at eight inches. Then I'm going to just flip it around and put it at the four inch mark. And now what I love about this trim is the fact that I have a score blade as well. I can score it and cut and back our card base. So I'm using Knight of Navy card stock and I'm just going to reinforce that with a very well loved bone folder like so. Bring back, bring, bring, oh, can't speak, bring back, bring back the trimmer. Fourth time this year. And now I'm going to do a matte layer at three and a half centimetres, uh, three and a half inches even, by three and a half inches. And this is just gonna give us a really nice border in order to play with. So if I put this over the top there, you can see that that's how it starts. So keep your scraps because you never know when you're gonna use them. Put that down. So on this matte layer, I wanted to kind of do some tonal background. So I'm not a big designer series paper or pattern paper user. I like to create my own design and textures um, with different elements. So I went or I gravitated to the artistic mix decorative masks and you have this really cool plaid effect. Now this is a dual mask. So if I open this up, you do get, she says, trying to find it, this mask as well, which works perfectly with this one. As you can see there, to create some really fun and interesting backgrounds, but this on its own is perfectly fine. So when ink blending, I like to use our masking papers, which I just keep in a little clear stamp case which is the exact same as these these are sold separately so you can always purchase one so i'm going to grab some of my mask sheets and what i like to do he says you can get one out is use this to kind of hold my mask into place. So I'm going to cut this down, bring back the trimmer, just so it's slightly bigger than our piece of card stuff. I'm going to line it up to where I want it to be, so it's not the easiest things to see on my glass mat. So I'm going to get that pretty much even and then where's pull off the back and cover it up like so and when I flip this round that's not moving okay so I know where that is now, it's not going to move when I ink blend, it's not perfectly straight, but there you go. These things are sent to try us. 
So one thing I love about Stampin' Up! is the fact that we have coordinating ink to our cardstock. So Night of Navy ink, Night of Navy cardstock gives this amazing tonal effect. And I'm using one of the Stampin' Up!'s blender brushes. So I have one for every single colour in the rainbow. Uh, so this is my blue one. Just going to load it up by rubbing it in a circular motion. And then it's a matter of just applying that ink. Like so. Getting a good coverage. Ink on my hands now. It ain't crafting if you ain't inky. So lay this down. You want a full coverage and quite even. It doesn't matter so much about the middle bit because it's going to be covered by a piece of pumpkin pie. But you want around the edges to be pretty even so that it looks correct which i think that's all good to go so i can just close up my ink pad move that out of the way and time for the big reveal and you can see there that it's gone from a piece of cardstock like this to now something like this and it took seconds and it's as simple as removing that masking paper, like so, gently. If it does stick for whatever reason, so you might have some frayed edge that it gets caught on, which this one hasn't. Oh, let's throw that straight in the bin. Um, just apply your heat tool to the back and it reduces, it, it removes that kind of residue. So that's going to pop up onto our card base, like so. I'm going to grab my Stampin' Dimensionals, which, for the purpose of this video, I have got a brand new sheet out of. So I'm going to pop one in every corner. Like so. And then, so I like it to be very secure. So let's do, as it's a square, let's do nine. Like so, peel the backs off. And this is when having nails is a blessing. And then just line it up. So I always go one corner, find it where it should be. Second corner where it should be. So I'll do this corner, then this corner, then dropping down the third, and then four. And then that's perfectly in place. Then we're going to do some die cutting. So I'm going to move that out of the way and bring in oh, my cutting and box machine. It's one of my favourite tools. And I'm going to try and do everything in one go. Shall we see if we, I can do it? So I've got a piece of pumpkin pie, which is this fab orange colour, which I'm just going to pop there. And I have our layering circle dies, um, which I am using the third biggest. So it's quite small, like the biggest is here, and you have these normal circles and the scallop circles, which give a wonderful little border around. But I'm using just a plain and ordinary circle. So I'm going to pop that in there. Then what do I need? Let's have a look at the card. You need a piece of old olive so I'm, again tiny i'm using little bits of scraps i'm gonna die cut one of the hot dies and a leaf because i was clever and pre cut some you're gonna need a piece of vellum and the outline of the beer glass 
pop that in and pop that there. Don't think I'm going to get it all through on one. Need a piece of white. Let me just cut this down. So it can fit on. Let's rip these bits off. So a piece of basic white as well. And you might as well cut the little kind of beer froth and the insert die so you just need this little bit in white but you might as well die cut it all because there's so many different things that you can do with these so let's run this through like so voila and then we have some of our elements. So we have the glass in vellum. We have our leaf and our hop, which I'm going to be careful when I remove it because I don't want to lose all of the insert bits. I want to keep some of them in there. There's that. If I do lose any, I lose some. We have our beer froth. Inserts. We have our beer insert, which we're gonna run through again. You only wanna keep this bit for this project. But again, you could ink blend this, you can watercolor it. You can do lots with it. And then our pumpkin pie circle. So with the hops, you're going to want three hops and four leaves. I'm also going to run through a piece of Daffodil Delight. Let's just get these bits off. And again, with this one, as you can see, I've used it many occasions with this colour. Run that through. He said, like so. And this is going to be the body of it a lot more. Or we're going to use the body of it on this piece. So you're going to want this bit. And then that should be us done. Let's put this on the floor out of the way. So as I said, I've already die cut my other little hops and leaves in readiness for assembly. So let's put all that together. Uh, let's do some ink, more ink blending. So this is Daffodil Delight card. I'm going to use So Saffron. So So Saffron is a more muted yellow um, than the Daffodil Delight. But it gives us this fun kind of depth, uh, which I really like on the side. So where you can see the bubbles here is where I'm going to apply the ink. So I'm just going to ink it up and apply the So Saffron just along the bottom and you can see there like so it just gives that little texture and edge to it and now it's just a matter of assembling. So I'm going to start with the beer. So we've got the glass shape and then we have the liquid, which is the Daffodil Delight cardstock. Add a little bit of Tombow or liquid glue and pop that in the center. Now what I love about these dies is the fact that you have, or how do I explain it? You've got the glass bit, you've got the edging to it, which is really fun. Add the little white bit here. Like so. Okay, so that's that element done. We're gonna have some fun with this little beer froth. So I've got a post-it note, which I'm just gonna pop it onto. Now, in the 
July to December mini catalogue. We have this Snowfall Accents Puff Paste. This is so fun. Okay, so it comes out. I need to give it a shake first because I haven't used it for a bit. Just line that up, give it a little shake. Like so. Now this goes on as a liquid, but by applying a little bit of heat, it kind of puffs up and it looks like snow, so it's really fun. And you want to be quite generous with it. So I do a blob, and then I literally move that blob as close as I can to the edge without going over the edge. Because if we go over the edge, it's going to get stuck to the post-it note. And it's not going to be fun to try and get off. Want to try and get rid of any air bubbles. Because air bubbles are not your friend. Okay, so I've got nice, good coverage. Let's just put the lid back on that. And I'll show you closer. Like so. And then all you're going to, to do is heat set it. So because I've got full coverage... I have no way of holding it. So that's why we've used the sticky bit of the post-it note to hold it so that I can bring in my heat tool and make it puff, basically. So let me bring this close. I've got my heat tool here. I'm gonna make some noise. Just let it heat up off of it. I'm going to hold it quite close so you can see it change. And like that, you have your beer froth. How fun and quick and easy was that to do? And it's just a matter now of pulling that off, like so. And voila. So I've got dirty fingers because of ink blending. It's a nightmare, but it's so much fun. I haven't got any mini dimensionals, so let's just grab some. So I'm gonna use a mini dimensional on the back of this, this is trying to get it off, like so, and that's just going to then sit on top of our bottle, like so. And if I flip it over, you can see there's a little hangover there. So just so it sits correctly, I'm going to use another dimensional just there. Okay, but we'll come back to adhering it onto our circle very shortly. Let's put the lid on our liquid glue. Martin, you're terrible. And let's move the dimensional cover. Okay, so next up, we are going to do our sentiment. He says. Not having the right card stuff. So good job, everything is in close proximity. Wrong colour. So I'm going to use some specific point card stuff. So I keep all of my scraps in these clear wallets, like so. Yeah, it is Pacific Point. Martin, you're terrible. No matter how organised I can be, there will always be something. So I am going to use a Versamark ink and my embossing buddy. I'm going to run that over the area that I intend on embossing. That's just going to remove any static. I've got the sentiment on a clear block 
H. So it's another round for your birthday, which if you're like me, you have a couple when it's your birthday. So I'm gonna ink that up. I'm gonna put this on to our grip paper. I'm gonna line it up. So I'm gonna put it in the middle. You might be like, there's a lot of excess space. And that's fine. I want there to be excess space so we can do our little banners perfectly. So that's stamped. I'm gonna grab my white embossing powder. I'm gonna sprinkle that over. Give it a little tap off. And then I'm gonna heat set that as well. because I've used that as a dumping ground and bring that back in. So what I'm gonna do is you see the bottom of the sentiment. On our trimmer, we have the runway for the blade. So I'm gonna line the bottom of the sentiment up with that runway, runway even, so that it's straight. And then we're gonna cut. So that was pretty straight, but there is a slight larger bit here than there is there. And then again, I'm gonna line up the top of our sentiment, like so, and again, cut. And there you have a perfectly straight sentiment. Easy peasy. So to create the banner shape, We've got these extra little bits here and here. I'm going to grab my paper snips and just cut it down like so. And then the extra elements I'm going to line up together like so. I'm going to trim them down to the same length. And then I'm just going to go in the center, like so, and in from either corner to create our banner. Like so, let's push that to one side. And then we've got perfect equal tail ends for our sentiment. So these are going to be popped up again on mini dimensionals and I'm going to pop them on the bottom corners like so. Try to actually get it not hanging off the edge. Turn it round and just line up one, bring in the other one, and line that up as well, just so they're equal, or as equal as can be, and there you have a quick and easy banner effect using one strip of card cut down. Now let's go on to assembly, so let's bring back our card base. I'm gonna grab some of our bigger dimensionals for our piece of pumpkin pie. Let's pop one in every corner, like so. This is going to sit in the center of our card, like so. Then I'm gonna pop dimensional on the back of our little beer and we can take off the back of the other one and pop that in the center like so 
and then I'm going to add a dimensional to the middle of our banner show and put that at a bit of an angle like so and then it's just a matter of adding the hops so there's a mixture of dimensionals and liquid glue so i am going to pop a dimensional wherever the die innards that's not the correct term but are and i'm just going to pop them around our beer like so if any more fall out they fall out but it's just a fun kind of idea on keeping some elements in taking some out and I don't know about you, but sometimes it's really hard to get all the little bits out. And I don't have time for it. So, pop these up on dimensionals. Let's grab this one. This. I'm going to cut a dimensional in half. Like so. Pop that half back on. Let's pop that one in there. Pulls back up. That's not helpful. Let's just grab an actual dimensional, stick it on, and we'll hide it by sticking it underneath our element, like so. And then the leaves are just going to be added with the liquid glue. So pop a little bit of liquid glue on the base and then pop them around our hops like so just to give it that extra little detail pop that one underneath there and last but not least, this one just poking out under here. And if I tidy up a little bit, we can then zoom in so you can see the finished project side by side. And there you have a super fun and easy project. So I hope you enjoyed today's card. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to answer them. All products are available at my online store. Uh, so just head over to martinsmyhome.co.uk. Other than that, see you later. Bye.